So there I was, the volcano had finally been unplugged, lava was flowing, I had my new sexy whale ship, and off to sea I go, and then... Welcome back, Classic Crew, as I continue to journey through Monster Hunter for you and document the whole story through these journals. I've now made it to Chico Sands, kind of a cheeky name if you ask me. And it only keeps on getting better. This game keeps on delivering. It doesn't slow down. The pacing is so good. We have our flagship now introduced, the Gormagala, which came out of nowhere. I was actually thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, what is the point of this story again? We're building a ship because we're trying to get somewhere because we have the shard. And the game kind of just reminded me of like, no, no, no. Oh, no, you don't want me to fight this now, do you? If there wasn't so much forewarning by the crew before I left saying, are you sure you're ready? Do you have everything? Did you empty your pouch? Do you have all the items you want? I was like, oh, something big's gonna happen, isn't it? No! In fact, I had almost forgotten he was the flagship of this game that I think the story revolves around. So I was just completely caught unaware because I was having so fun with all these new monsters and new locales and new races and all these other things. Um, so it was a very fun and like encouraging uh, stream of just new stuff. So starting off with the Gendrome, I wasn't really expecting much from a drone. These things tend to be kind of, yeah. And I was like, really? I fought three different types of you at this time, at this point. What are you going to do different? And it's like, oh, come on. I think when it comes to fighting the drones, the one that poisons is definitely not as bad. The one that puts the baggie, I think is the one that puts you to sleep. And this one, that paralyzes you are kind of the two that are just, you know, really stops the flow of the fight. So not a fan of these. And then I think the little Gendromes, the little minions, they can also paralyze you. Those weren't so much of a problem because I cleared the the crowd pretty quick. One thing I really love about the charge blade is when you put it in axe mode and you just go whoosh, whoosh around, all the little things die. It's beautiful. It's one thing that I struggle with a little bit with the switch axe, that the, the charge blade is just way superior. It can crowd control really efficiently. I love it. Bam, first capture. I got a little bit further on my egg journey because I've learned that there is a fatalis that unlocks at the end of the egg. If you're just joining me on the journey, reminder, I have a pledge to defeat every form of fatalis in this game, which means I do have to pursue this whole egg mafia business. Now, a Trovarian is in on the Mafia, and he uh, had me send, uh, had me go get some herbivore eggs. And I have to say, I was a little bit worried about this because the whole chat went on a moat only. They were going all like, shh, don't tell him, don't tell him. I was like, oh, come on, what's going to happen? And I was on edge the whole time, and it was one of the most uneventful quests ever. The stress was only there simply because chat made it up, and there was no, there was nothing to fear. I, I killed the herbivores, I took their eggs, and I climbed some mountains. Uh, our next new monster was the Nursilla fight, and I was really looking forward to this, not because I like spiders, but because bugs are things I have just not fought a lot of in Monster Hunter. In fact, there are no bugs in the other games that I've played, so I've only really fought uh, Celtus and Nursilla, which count as bugs. Now, there is the spider in Rise Sunbreak, but it's not quite the same. It's definitely the more buggy of the monsters, but this one feels way more spider-ish. And it has, so I'm realizing Monster Hunter for you has a double floor kind of layout that I haven't seen in other Monster Hunter games. And it's very unique to this layout. And I think it's part of the design of verticality. And this is the equivalent of Monster Hunter 3 use water. Basically the water fights were unique to Monster Hunter 3, 3U. I think the dual level stage is what's unique to the Monster Hunter 4 for you fights. And that's when uh, the monster can either go like above you or below you or swing from vines and stuff. I've now seen this with the Quechawacha that could uh, make use of that pretty good. Nursilla and later on Kongala. They all fight you at two levels and there's different strategies depending on how you fight it. I really love this layout. I prefer it way more than under underwater fighting. And if there's one thing I'm realizing I would definitely want in a future Monster Hunter is if they can bring back that dual stage layout, and if that means bringing back some of these monsters in future installments, I'm all for it. I, I enjoy it because I'm like, oh, it's up there. What, what's it going to do up there? And it's a different set of moves than if you're above it. And it just really makes for an interesting fight. So Nursilla was a cool fight. Overall, the thing I hated the most were its freaking mandibles, which just come out of nowhere. As its own like default state 
Yeah, it's a gross spider, but it's nothing too bad. But then when the mandibles come out and it's twice as long as its own body and it's just trying to chomp you, those things are nightmare fuel. I don't like those. And I got chomped a few times because I got uh, webbed. So Nursilla fell. Uh, there was nothing really. I, I found out that Nursilla actually eats the gypsy roast, which I absolutely despise, as I said in the last video. So I can't really hate on Nursilla in any capacity, even if there was something I disliked because she eats that thing, perfect. In fact, I don't even want to hunt Nursilla. Let the Nursilla populate so that there are no more gypsaros. That's how it's gonna go. All right, so after that, I got, uh, she was the one clogging up the volcano with her web. So the volcano um, released, we had lava everywhere. The Trevarians uh, knocked out of their depression and then they built a ship. And out of all the things they could have built, they built a whale, a whale of a ship. Well, look at that. Not the most, I don't know, exciting looking ship. I never understood the obsession with making whales for ships. Uh, they did it in Final Fantasy IV as well. It was actually a spaceship and they made it as a whale. Like whales belong underwater. If it was a whale sub, it'd be one thing, but a whale ship, not a big fan. I do like the fact that you see the big dragonator, but it also, it's so obvious that it's in its mouth. It's like telling the monster, I have a dragonator, fly in front of me if you want to die. It's, it's not effective. So we sail out with the whale ship uh, called the Arluk, I think it's called. I know I could just say Arluk, but I feel that the R needs to be a little bit more glottal for this one. Arluk. We sail off and then out of nowhere in the stormy sea, a uh, freaking Gormagala comes out and attacks us. Oh. Really interesting throwback to the fight in 3U where you fight the uh, Gen Moran. Very different because now instead of a sea like uh, or a sand whale, you're fighting at sea and you're fighting... Uh, I don't even know, an elder dragon? Like this thing's flying around. So it was intimidating. It uses a lot of the moves I recognize from Sunbreak. I did get the whole frenzy. Uh, thankfully it was just a repel quest because I was not ready to fight this thing. <laughs> I think, I don't think I was doing so well. Luckily I knew how to use all the artillery and stuff on the ship. And I think I, yeah, I got the Dragonator off and using some Ballista and some few well-timed position like attacks on it, it fell. Flew away. Oh, no, it didn't fly away. Flew away, came back, and then the ace squad came in and rammed their boat and made sure the Gormagala went away. So that's who the ace crew is after. They still haven't really uh, learned to respect me yet, so I have to earn their respect. But anyways, we washed up on Chico Sands, which is our next area. And uh, here there are a lot of palicos. There's a little palico island, and it looks like I've now opened up the palico system. Uh, after saving one of the palicos from a conga from a conga is it a congala or a congalala i don't know the pink monkey who is a joke i don't out of all the monkeys this is the most the least threatening he's just a funny monkey even funnier than the Ketchawacha. they just keep making him funnier and for you and then i guess there's the ultimate funny monkey waiting for me later on in the game but this one i mean he's got a heart on his butt he farts he's known for farting that's his big thing he's he's a gassy boy and they made him like cute and pink. So there's nothing, and even when I'm fighting him, the worst thing he does is he jumps up in the air, you see the shadow, you you move aside, he glomps on the floor, and then you just bang him, and then you have stay away when he gets crampy. It's it's not that difficult of a fight, at least not yet. So uh, the Kongalala was slain, I think it's la, two laws, Lala. And the Palico uh, was open, or was open, the Palico was saved and now I can hire more palicos or something. I'm still not very well versed in the whole palico system, but I now have two palicos. So Classy has a friend who is joining us on our adventures and um, things are gonna die faster, I assume. I also did a fishing quest and I know I've laughed a bit in the past about the chat saying, oh, fishing quests are bad and I've been kind of lucky. This time my luck has run out. I needed four small goldfish and it took me, I think a good half hour to get them. They just weren't spawning. They weren't biting the line. It took a long time to get those small goldfish. Now I understand the fishing pain when you're not getting the fish you want. Uh, and then I did another catch a watch fight, which unlocks some new monsters. So I've got a Basarios, which has been unlocked, uh, that is waiting for me in the next stream. And super hype, because the next urgent quest, I think it's an urgent quest, is a Zamtrios. Maybe it's not an urgent quest. Zamtrios, which is a monster I've been wanting to fight since I've met it in Monster Hunter Stories 2. So super excited for an ice frog. I think it's a frog. Basarios, that one I'm not so excited for, especially with a charge blade. I'm not going to have my 
um, whatever mind's eye that lets me just ignore its rock side. So, so that's where we are. We're at Chico Sands. We're still hunting uh, some new monsters. And uh, soon, I guess we're going to be looking for the Gormagala as we continue through village rank. And I think I'm at three star or four star now. So working our way through that lower end of the story. And it's all been such a fun time. So join me next time on my next journal or my next stream at twitch.tv slash And until then, keep it classy.